and that's New Haven Town Station where I would have got the train over from Eastbourne but no trains today because Southern uh, have uh, engineered a rail strike so uh, yes I got a lift from my good friend Paul and I've been staying with him and Debbie yes yeah, so now uh, it's time to catch the ferry from New Haven to Dieppe Well, I'm squinting into this beautiful December sunshine and uh, coming across to New Haven, the sea out there is calm, flat calm. So uh, I'm really looking forward to a lovely crossing from here in New Haven to Dieppe with DFDS. Uh, I've never been with DFDS before. If you've watched this channel, I think I'm mostly on Stena. So um, yeah, it'd be a nice time to uh, try out DFDS and see how they go. So uh, yeah, come along and we will see how it goes. The foot passenger check-in is right next to New Haven Town Station, which is very handy. And although the architectural style could be described as large porter cabin, the interior does provide a pleasant enough place for the modern traveller to wait. There's the check-in desk where all the formalities were completed with ease and some marketing for the Seine Maritime region and also places to get on with some work if you need to. This sailing is going to be incredibly quiet. There's just a few of us dotted around the waiting area and we are soon called forward for a passport check and a random bag search. Passengers with lots of bags will have them taken on and off in the little baggage tug. But I'm travelling light today, no American football on this trip. Well, I expected the bus to enter the ship as I've seen so many times before, but this operation is old school and we get to walk in along the vehicle ramp, which certainly begins the sailing with a slight sense of occasion. Well, I've never seen so few vehicles on a ferry. There seems to be about half a dozen hiding at the back and that's it. There is a lift, but let's climb the stairs to the passenger decks. and we pop out on deck six near the restaurant. But it's too early for lunch and besides, all I want to do is get on deck and enjoy this beautiful sunshine. Here's some stairs up to deck seven, so let's keep going up. So yeah, uh, here we are, New Haven. The, uh, the boarding process was uh, very smooth, but I suppose that's Probably not hard when you've got about 10 foot passengers to get on and uh, hardly any vehicles as you probably saw on the uh, walk up the uh, vehicle deck was very empty and it's a very cold December day and it's absolutely gorgeous. I'm looking forward to seeing the white cliffs of the South Downs over there to my left. We should get some absolutely gorgeous views as we leave the UK and steam over to France. So the journey is going to take about four hours. It's due to leave here at 11 a.m. and then arrive in France at 4 p.m. French time. So that's a four hour crossing. And uh, yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. Already the wandering around the ship. Yeah, these, these ships are definitely a bit older than uh, some of the other ships I've used on crossings with Stena, but I'm happy with that. Let's just see how good the lunch is, how, how well she rides, and how comfy the seats are inside. But most of the time, let's just stay out here and watch the world go by. Looking out across the channel, or La Manche, it's about as still as a mill pond, so I uh, couldn't be better. Really looking forward to this, and uh, I think I've waffled on too much, so uh, hopefully I've got enough shots that I've covered up most of this talk with uh, some much more interesting things to see than my um, grubby face. Let's press on and uh, I'll see you a bit further into the journey. The ferry port at New Haven sits on the banks of the River Ouse, so the first order of the day is to back the ship out of the river's mouth. It was the coming of the railway in 1847 which led to the provision of a regular cross-channel ferry to Dieppe in 1853 and the London, Brighton and South Coast Railway started its own steamer service in 1863. Looking down on the approaches is New Haven Fort, which was completed in 1871. 
It is now a preserved site and open to the public. I just hope those guns up there aren't loaded. And once we get beyond the breakwater, it will be time to complete our manoeuvre and the ship can start sailing forwards. You know, I don't think I've ever been on a sea that is this calm. And the first view as we begin to speed away is of New Haven and its close neighbour Seaford. And, as the heading of the ferry isn't actually directly south to France, but rather to the southeast, we'll hug this chalk down coastline for quite some time. And the first big lump of chalk we get to see is Seaford Head. And it's so still today, there's a visible clear division between the silty river water and the sea. Whilst this coastline passes by, let's talk a little bit more about the ferry. Well, the MS Cote d'Albatre was built in Spain for Transmanche ferries and had a maiden voyage in 2006. Both this ship and her sister ship, the Seven Sisters, were built to serve this route and are the maximum size that could be accommodated at the New Haven Harbour. On board, there's space for 224 cars, 75 freight vehicles and 600 passengers including 196 beds in her 50 cabins. And with one last lingering look at Beachy Head, we now chug out into the open sea. And that's my cue to get into the warm and get myself a coffee. Bar Corneal on deck 7 is a great place for a coffee, even though the tabletops do look a bit warm. However, the double height design is pretty impressive. Right, let's go down to deck 6 and do a quick tour. Down here, off the salon, are the comfortable recliners if you fancy a quick nap. And forward of that is the restaurant Maupassant, where I shall be getting my lunch quite soon. Forward of the restaurant is the main reception and beyond that are the cabins. And as you can see, DFDS has continued to use the Transmanche branding. There is an upper restaurant area, but with so few passengers, it's been cordoned off. And on the other side is an unused bar, a few lacklustre games machines, and the saddest pair of shop windows I think I've ever seen. And finally, there's a small duty-free shop. But as I'm traveling very light, I have decided not to buy either the Union Jack Teddy nor the London branded watering can. As you might expect, there wasn't a queue at the restaurant and I got served fairly quickly. Just a bit of time to kick back and listen to my American football podcast. The podcast was entertaining and the lunch was nice and it was great to sit down, but the lure of the outside was just too great. One of the great things about the ship is there's loads of deck space spread over a number of levels for what is a comparatively small ferry. Well, more than halfway to France now. Uh, looking back, I can't make out the White Cliffs of uh, the South Downs, so uh, yeah, we're moving along quite well. So, yes, it's an old ship. It certainly, even on such a calm day as this, it has a bit of a move on it, so I suspect stabilization isn't quite as good as uh, more modern craft. So, you know, bring a sick bag if it's, uh, if it's gonna be a rough crossing. Anyway, yeah, halfway here. So, uh, yeah, I've just had a lovely time, really, chilling out on the boat, and I will continue to do so for the next hour or so before we get to Dieppe I'll be uh, looking out and I suppose in the modern world you check out how close are we to the French coast when uh, your phone suddenly picks up some French signal so uh, yeah I'm, uh, I'm in enjoying what is really with the weather like this not so much a ferry ride as just an afternoon's cruise across La Manche see you in Dieppe
Hello France. With the sun going down, I was extremely pleased I had my thick Under Armour base layer underneath my ski jacket. I would have hated to have missed these views of the French coastline on account of being too cold to stay outside. There appears to be more chalk cliffs here, so I suspect there's a fairly close geological relationship between the two coastlines. Oh, and also sharp-eyed viewers will be able to spot the Ponglee PWR nuclear power plant, which is just six miles north of Dieppe. As we enter the dock, let's talk about what I paid for this crossing. Well, as a foot passenger, I bought a ticket about a month in advance and paid £31 for my journey today, which I think is a pretty fair price. Had I needed to be in Paris tonight, onward train tickets can be as low as £14.50, which would still leave time to have dinner in Dieppe before arriving in Paris before 9.30pm. Judging by the look of it, it's a decent walk from here to the town centre. But still, it's lovely weather and I'm in no rush. Right, well they've asked all foot passengers to go down to deck 6 down by the duty free shop, so uh, off we go down there then. And off we go by the rear-facing escalator. And our little band of travellers takes a short bus ride to the terminal building to finally gain entry to France. And that's it. I'd brought the right paperwork and I answered all their questions correctly, so here I am in France, ready for more adventures on the train with my interrail ticket. But first I'll have to negotiate the walk along the busy road that you always seem to get when you're a foot passenger on a ferry. Good afternoon from the quayside here at Dieppe. Well, we disembarked very quickly and went through passport control, no problem. So I'm just on the walk down into the town itself, where I'll be staying tonight, as uh, one of the bonuses and one of the problems, of course, of travelling in December is it gets dark quite soon. So I'll call it a day here and um, travel on tomorrow. So anyway, if you've uh, if you enjoyed this little trip on the ferry, then uh, do come back and uh, join me again. So best thing to do is subscribe to the channel and then you've got less chance of missing things. I'm going to check into my hotel now and get something to eat and um, yeah in the next video we'll catch up with me and uh, see where I go next. But in the meantime from the quayside here in Dieppe it's goodbye and thank you very much for watching.